Welcome to St. Simon's Parish on the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the Gospel today, we are encouraged to use our unique gifts to build God's kingdom. Our lives are a gift from God, and what we do with our lives is a gift to God. Let us then encourage each other to develop our gifts and enrich our community. Please stand to welcome our celebrant Father Kevin as we sing our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And when I say with you all, I mean all of you. Those few of us who are here in the church, and that number will be increased a little in the weeks to come, for which we are very pleased indeed, and may that number grow. But also with you all out there, on our website and also our radio congregation on 89.9 The Light. So while I'm looking at a lot of empty seats, there are still a lot of people who are part of our Mass and our prayer today. The 33rd Sunday doesn't get any more than that, does it? I think it's Feast of Christ the King the next week. I think that's right. And we'll getting towards what we might call the business end of the church's year and of the year itself. And as they say in the classics, what a year it's been. <laughs> and this is one of these stories we'll be reflecting back on 2020, well, probably in different ways for the rest of our lives. And the thing we've really got to take on board, of course, is while we look towards 2021, we hope and pray that those things that we've had to negotiate health-wise and any other number of different ways can be managed as best as possible in the year that's ahead. But for now, we try to finish off 2020 as best we can 
And at this Mass, which is our focus just at this moment, we ask for forgiveness for our sins. Lord, you are good and faithful. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you are the giver of all good gifts. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you invite us into your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, Grant us the constant happiness of being devoted to you. For full and lasting happiness is to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In the first reading, the book of Proverbs describes an ideal wife. At the same time, it suggests that a morally good life involves a readiness to make industrious use of one's abilities, as well as a willingness to share one's good fortune with those in need. A reading from the book of Proverbs. A perfect wife, who can find her? She is far beyond the price of pearls. Her husband's heart has confidence in her. From her, he will derive no little profit. Advantage and not hurt she brings him all the days of her life. She's always busy with wool and with flax. She does her work with eager hands. She sets her hands to the distaff. Her fingers grasp the spindle. She holds out her hand to the poor. She opens her arms to the needy. Charm is deceitful and beauty empty. The woman who is wise is the one to praise. Give her a share in what her hands have worked for and let her works tell her praises at the city gates. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, happy are those who fear the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. You will be happy and prosper. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Your wife like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. Your children like shoots of the olive around your table. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion in a happy Jerusalem all the days of your life. Happy are those who fear the Lord. In the second reading, St. Paul has a message to all Christians that we should be faithful at all times in the service of God and be prepared to give an account of the way we have lived our lives. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You will not be expecting us to write anything to you, brothers, about times and seasons, since you know very well that the day of the Lord is going to come like a thief in the night. It is when people are saying, how quiet and peaceful it is, that the worst suddenly happens, as suddenly as labor pains come on a pregnant woman, 
and there will be no way for anybody to evade it. But it is not as if you live in the dark, my brothers and sisters, for that day to overtake you like a thief. No, you are all sons of light and daughters of the day. We do not belong to the night or to darkness, so we should not go on sleeping as everyone else does, but stay wide awake and sober. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to reclaim the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Live in me and let me live in you, says the Lord. My branches bear much fruit. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a man on his way abroad who summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to a third one, each in proportion to his ability. Then he set out. A long time after, the master of those servants came back, and he went through his accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents came forward, and he brought five more. Sir, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. Here are five more that I have made. And the master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have shown you can be faithful in small things. I will trust you with greater. Come and join in your master's happiness. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In getting prepared for this weekend's Mass, I was much relieved to find that our reader for this, particularly the online Mass, would be a lady, lovely lady, Tinica, who's here at this Mass, because you can imagine, had we had a gentleman, first reading, a perfect wife, who can find her? The word of the Lord. <laughs> Finish off there. So looking at different scripture verses and just taking them exactly as they've found can be somewhat problematic. But And it was a lady reading it, made it just a little bit more manageable. The rest of it you can debate amongst yourselves in your own time. But I was thinking and looking at the Gospel today, it's funny how sometimes you can remember vividly different events which sort of stand out. I can remember going into the parish office at Geelong where I was at the time, 2009, and one of our wonderful volunteers there, Lady by the name of Margaret, who may well be watching this. She's now living in Queensland. But she called me over and says, have a, have a look at this. And it was a YouTube clip, wonderful YouTube, which makes our mass possible to those watching on the internet. It was of a lady who had appeared on a show that I hadn't heard of before called Britain's Got Talent. Now, we all know about those shows now, of course. But it was the audition of a little lady from Scotland, a little village in Scotland. At the time, she was 47 years of age. So she would be heading up close to 60 by now. Her name, Susan Boyle. Her audition is probably one of the most watched YouTube clips ever. An extraordinary story of a woman close to 50 who had stayed home, never married, never had children, never really had any sort of a major career, looked after her ailing mother who died well into her 90s, sang in the local church choir. She was a Catholic, remained so, faith important to her. And somehow or other she decided to have a crack at Britain's Got Talent. 
and the rest, as they say, is history. An extraordinary story of someone who always had this marvellous capacity to sing so beautifully, but only a handful of people in her church had really heard her. Somehow or other, someone gave her the encouragement that she needed to say, why don't you have a go? And of course, one thing led to the other, recording contracts and so on. It's one of the really happy stories of recent times of someone discovering her talent. But it wasn't really that she discovered it. She always knew she could sing. She just didn't have the opportunity to be able to express that and give the happiness to people as she has done in the past 11 years. The word talent, of course, that we hear in the Gospel, we think of mainly in terms of a capacity to do something well, whether it's singing, playing a musical instrument, it might be in some areas of science, it might be being able to unravel the mysteries of an iPhone, it can be any number of different things for which we say we've got a talent, a capacity to do things. But that's not the only meaning of the word, as we hear in the Gospel. With the parable of the talents, it was ascribed to an amount of money that was given. But it was money given, something given to those servants. And the longer version of the Gospel tells of the one who got two and the one who got none. We've heard the story before. The one who got two made two more. The one who got five made five more. And the one who got one, he buried it and he did nothing with it and he was not very popular as a result of doing that with his master. Because his master said, I gave it to you to do what you could with it, and you did nothing at all. So we're familiar enough with the story that Jesus told us, but it's the message that we've got to take on board. And first of all, of recognising that we do have the talent, but maybe the word itself gets in the way of us getting the message. If you substituted the word talent for equipment, you have the equipment to make this a better world by using what you have been given. Is essentially the message that Jesus is giving us in the Gospel. And so what we can do today maybe is to look into our own lives and minds and hearts and say, well, okay, what equipment has God given me to make this a better world? And that doesn't mean changing the whole world, but the world in which I live. Now, in Susan Boyle's case, she went from a little village in Scotland to having her talent made known and enjoyed and recognised the world over. And that's not going to happen to many. But that could happen, and it did happen to her. Turn the clock back 11 years, and she would have never have believed that her life would have taken the turn that it did. But she was still the same person. She was the same Susan Boyle the day before that audition that catapulted her into worldwide recognition still the same person the day before and the day after. But she was able to use what God had given her in a very special way. And she's produced many of the albums that she's produced, of course, have featured inspirational and sacred songs. And so her sense of the importance of God, the importance of faith was very much part of the way in which she used her equipment, her talent, her gift. One of the songs on her very first album was a song which she didn't write, but it was one of those sort of uplifting songs, and she included it in her first album, Who I Was Born to Be. When I was a child, I could see the wind in the trees and I heard a song in the breeze. It was there, singing out my name. But I'm not a girl. I have known the taste of defeat. But I've finally grown to believe 
it will all come around again. And though I may not know the answers, I can finally say, I'm free. And if the questions led me here then, I am who I was born to be. I suppose the word that comes to mind as you read those, listen to those words and lyrics, is the word destiny. What is it that God calls you to, me to? And maybe we can look at our lives, particularly those of us who are a bit further along the track, and we can see milestones, crossroads, particular points in which our life changed and God gave us a talent, again, not an ability, but he gave us the equipment. It might be another person. That equipment might be another person that came into our life at a special time that was going to make that difference. And having made a difference to us, we can make a difference to others. The parable that Jesus tells us today is a beautiful one. And I've always found it far better to concentrate not so much on the guy who went and buried the talent. That can be part of the story, and it might be part of the stories of all of us in some capacity. But there's a sense of, you know, don't do the wrong thing, use your gifts, etc. But more importantly, maybe, let's have a look and identify what they are and really ask the Lord to help us to use that equipment that he has given us. It might be something called personality. It might be just something that's called generosity. We know people who are of a generous spirit and they can light up the world. We know people who just have an optimistic outlook on life and we can be having a bad day and they can make an enormous difference to the days of those around them. And they'll have bad days themselves, of course. But somehow or other, there is this capacity to make the world a better, brighter and happier place. And we haven't all got the same gifts. We haven't all got the same equipment. And thank goodness for that. Because it's the complementary nature of all of that that is meant to be put together. So let's take a leaf out of the fellow that had the five and it's nothing to do with money. It's to do with what God has given us, me, you, in our life. And he basically says, go and build a better world with what I have given you. Because I gave it to you for that reason. So we've got to say, well, what is it? The case of Susan Boyle is a worldwide example of how something can be there but either unrecognised by the person themselves and you could see even in the little video clip which we'll have on our website that she was a very humble person and yet this extraordinary gift to entertain but also to bring people into a sense of God's love and help and capacity to make the world a better place. Let's identify our own equipment, our own talent, and use what we've been given as well as we can. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now pray together our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now we come confidently 
asking God to hear the prayers within our heart. We pray for Pope Francis and all bishops of our church. By their teaching and example, may they lead people to see the wisdom embodied in the gospel. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. As we have commemorated on Remembrance Day, November 11, the end of World War I, we pray that people in our world who are ravaged by war may experience peace in their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish community as we gradually emerge from lockdown and begin to discern the way forward. May the struggles we have experienced this year strengthen us as a community and deepen our commitment to God, to each other, and to the world we are called to love. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and those who care for them. May they experience God's comfort and healing touch through the love and care of our community. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died recently, especially Julia Guterich Rodriguez, Roseanne Franks, and Wilma Spees. We also pray for Graziano Martino and Desmond Hare and all those whom we hold sacred in our hearts at this time. May they find rest in God's loving embrace. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we make these prayers together with those within our hearts with confidence in the name of Christ Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. I missed you this wine. And water. And we come to share in the divinity of Christ humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. God, we ask you to receive us in pleas for the sacrifice we offer you, humble and contrite hearts. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, grant that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you. May it gain for us the prize of everlasting happiness. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now we possess the pledge of eternal life. Having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who Amen. art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's now off each other as best we can, the sign of peace and friendship in Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Perhaps at this part of the Mass, as much as any, I'm very conscious of the number of people who participate online, particularly on the weekend, and very much aware of the fact that while we are literally here, there and everywhere, we're very much focused and effectively together in here at St Simon's for the celebration of Mass and in particular at this time of Holy Communion, our little spiritual communion prayer very much unites us together in that belief, in that faith, in that mystery. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Mm -hmm.
Let us pray. Lord, we have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery. We humbly implore that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I mentioned this during the week, but indicated I would do it again for this weekend Mass. And that is just to offer a note of thanks and appreciation for the many people who over length of time have emailed or sent cards or even in some cases even sent donations and so on to express their appreciation of this Mass being provided on our website pretty well five days a week or any day a week if you want to. You can click into it as often as you wish to, of course. Going right back, I think we're up to about 180 or thereabouts at the moment. Heading close to, I'll be up here waving a cricket bat for we get to 200 in the near future. But particularly for those of you, and please don't think that this is a hint for if you haven't that you've got to do this, but the number of people who have sent an email, it hasn't really been possible in a fairly hectic year to be able to get back to everyone but your kind thoughts and appreciation are very much valued and it's a great encouragement presenting the mass as we do sure we know the number of views that are on the website we don't know whether that's one person or many people or they're on for a short time or a long time or whatever but we do know particularly from those wonderful emails and cards that have been received that you really do value this and well we appreciate your <coughs> appreciation. So in the likelihood that it might be still a while till I can get back to acknowledge those individually, hope that this can be taken as a, a sense of a real thank you for taking the trouble and the effort to be able to send those notes and emails, not just to me, but in so many cases people mention the whole crew here, Peter behind our camera is also our editor extraordinaire of the Mass and Abby and Loretta, Julie looking after our safety and numbers and seat cleaning and people in the office, Felicia and Sophia, all those wonderful people who make this possible. It is a real team effort. It can be a jargon phrase but it's very appropriate here. But on their behalf I take the opportunity to thank you for the words of appreciation you've sent to us. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.